creative people, we're people pleasers. We yearn for that little compliment that a, that a client's gonna throw at us. They, that was brilliant. You do amazing work. How does somebody overcome that mm. imposter syndrome? I guess a place to start is the difference between self-confidence and self-esteem. There's a difference? Yeah. Self-confidence is how we, we feel about our own abilities. So left on our own, confident self-confidence would be how we feel about our own abilities in our own skin, in our own room. By ourselves. By ourselves. Okay, so self-esteem typically is how we feel about our abilities in the face of other people. Surround other people, that's called self-esteem because we're comparing ourselves. We interject how other people feel about us and that creates lasting effects. It's almost like an imprint, you know, a thumbprint or an imprint of some kind. So if we get enough negative feedback, we have an interdict that says you're no good at this. You had this negative voice inside from somewhere mm -hmm. and it was clear that it was in Chris, but it wasn't from Chris. Right. And now, the inner voice. Yeah, the inner voice. So in therapy, one of the things we try to do is discern what's from Chris and what isn't from Chris. So what are some of the tools that you use to figure that out? We're going to have an open chair. You're going to actually talk to that part of yourself. You're going to switch chairs. You're going to be that negative voice. So if it's your father's voice or your mother's voice, you get to see that there's a Chris or a Hugh, and there's a voice and they're not the same thing. Oh. Then you have some hand in crafting the kind of life you want. You can see where it gets very insidious that the, the power of the relationship that we have early on from the caregivers, from our parents, from other people who influence us. Don't we, isn't it all natural we all seek external praise? How would you respond to that? I think when you're young, you need it to build a self. Right. You're not a blank slate. You have your own temperament, which we can talk about. You have your own personality. It's great if a caregiver or parent can especially host emotions with a person. The message I got when I shared a difficult emotion, like, I'm angry, I'm afraid, my response from my caregivers was, well, don't feel that. Oh, they shut it down. They shut it down. So you were being unconsciously or uh, unintentionally trained to shut down all negative emotions. That's That was how I did it. Right. Not everybody did it. Some people fight back, some people push back, some people become very aggressive. My path or my temperament, which is introversion, tended to shut down and go inside and say, there must be something wrong with me. I started noticing in my relationships to women that there was, I was projecting onto them, meaning I was putting on to them needs that my mother didn't give me. Ooh. So I'd put a need of, I need to be constantly here, you did a good job, uh, oh. you're, you're a good boy, you did great on that music piece. For years and years, I don't know that's happening. I just right. know that it's not working. Well, here's how these things work. It's always the mindset, that imprint, the thing that you carry with you, mm. the thing that's holding you back. If people start noticing consciously what is happening when they're around somebody else, if you could start noticing, you know, whenever I'm around that person, I feel really nervous. Or if you're not a feeling type, the question is, well, how do I know what I'm feeling? So one easy way in is, do I like that or I do, do I not like that? Oh, okay. You might notice you feel hurt or you feel angry. Uh, you feel scared. You feel envious. You could start noticing you don't like something or a person and what's underneath the preference or the, the dislike.